welcome to your cooking class with Brooke. Today we're making French bread. Um, it's a really easy and simple recipe from my mom. And um, first off, make sure you wash your hands because you always want to cook with clean hands. Um, and the very first thing you're going to do is you're going to get a half a cup of warm water, which is which I already have. Um, you don't want it to be too hot or too cold, just warm, or else your yeast won't rise. So once you get your half a cup of warm water, we are going to add two tablespoons of yeast. And then three tablespoons of sugar. And I'm double dipping. That's just what I always do. You don't have to, that's just what I do. So three tablespoons of sugar. Okay. Once you have that done, you mix it all in so that the yeast can dissolve. It doesn't have to be completely dissolved. Like the yeast can still be clumpy. You just wanna make sure it's pretty well mixed in there with everything else. Okay, and then you're gonna set that aside to rise. Whoops, did my timer. <clears throat> so while the yeast is rising, you wanna kinda of work quickly because um, you don't want it to rise so much that it overflows your cup. So we need to combine six cups of flour. I would get a bowl, I have a pretty big bowl like this one and you have to make sure it has a lid to go over the top of it because this is where your dough is going to rise. So you add six cups of flour in here. And I mean, ooh, a huge, huge thing of flour. So I don't, I don't really like spoon it into the cup and use a knife. You just shake it in, get a close measurement. And that works pretty well. One, I'm gonna bring my bowl down here. Two, three, make sure you don't lose track of count, <laughs> like lose count. Four, because I've done that a lot of times. Five, six, that should be correct. Okay, now that you've got your flour, well, let me put this away. Okay, we're gonna add one tablespoon of salt. Don't like scatter it around the bowl either. Oh, sorry. You just dump it in. Easy as that. A tablespoon of salt. Okay. Now we need a third cup of oil, just vegetable oil. Where is my third cup? And don't scatter this either. Not a good idea. I made that mistake once. You get like weird dough clumps in your bread. And it wasn't very good. And then it like clumps up with your salt too. So a third cup of oil. And I know I'm using a dry measuring cup. Sue me. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. Just be careful when you do that. Okay, and last but not least, ah, two cups of hot water. This one you want hot water for. Okay, now you got your hot water. You just pour it in and that's it for right now. So you mix this all together. Make sure your dough, I mean your yeast is rising because if it's not, then you'll have to do it again because you did it wrong. It probably meant that your water wasn't hot enough, warm enough, or it was too warm, too hot. So just double check that. You can usually see there's like foam that rises up. And I'm sure most of you have made something with a yeast before, so you're all probably experts.
Okay. It shouldn't look like anything good. It should look something like this. This is what it should look like after you stir it. Just like that. Okay, after you have stirred your flour mixture and your yeast has risen, you're just gonna pour it in. And I kinda use my spoon to scrape out some of the yeast that I just mixed with. Okay. And now you mix this together. Again, it looks really weird. It smells like Cheerios to me. I don't know. I like Cheerios. So now it's gonna look the exact same, but kind of brown and liquidy. This is gonna be delicious, trust me. Okay, I kind of use a spoon. Let me grab one, actually. I don't, yeah, I don't like to use my fingers a lot to scrape off the dough from the wooden spoon. So I use a metal spoon to do that. And it should be pretty easy. You don't have to get all the dough off, but once you've stirred that, you're gonna cover it up with your lid and set a timer for 10 minutes. So we have to stir this down every 10 minutes, five times. So on my oven, I set a timer for 50 minutes so I can keep myself on track of how many times I've stirred. And then on my microwave timer or on your phone, I set a timer for 10 minutes so that I'll come back and stir it after that. By the way, I don't think it would be a bad idea if you, while you're waiting for 10 minutes, practice your piano because everyone needs a reminder at some point. Okay, now you're gonna set, uh, stir it for your second time. So only 10 minutes should have passed, which means my oven clock says 40. Sometimes I switch it back up because now it says 39. So I just bump it back up to 40. When it reaches zero, then you've stirred it five times. You don't have to stir it a lot, just move it around. And then, whoop, it's got yeast stuff on my oven. Scrape off that dough. And you put the lid back on, seal it up pretty good. And you start <laughs> another 10 minutes. Now you should be stirring for your third time. Hmm. Don't forget to start your timer like I just did. Now you should be stirring for your fourth time fourth time stirring. You now should be stirring for your fifth and final time. Okay. And then I'll tell you what happens next. Okay, you're gonna wanna get out a baking sheet, just like a cooking sheet. Don't spray it down or anything. Make sure you have clean hands for this. Again, wash them really good, especially under the nails. If it's really sticky, oops, you can get some flour out which I might have to do. Let's see. You wanna break off half of the dough. I'm definitely gonna get some flour. Uh, oh. That first, this is really good. Hopefully that is enough. Okay. So. <laughs> I kind of have some stirring the flour around. You don't want to put too much flour in here. Okay. So once you get all your dough, 
It likes to stick to the bottom, which is why you're seeing difficulties. You want to use in between your thumb and your pointer finger to pinch the dough and break off half. Like that. Almost like you're milking a cow if you've ever done that. Of course. <laughs> Y'all know I have. Okay. You kind of have to mold it with your hands. I kind of like go back and forth. I might need more dough again. You don't want to get too thin in the middle. And it doesn't actually look pretty either. You can try to do something pretty with it, but we don't because we just eat it immediately. But once you get kind of a bread form, you can slap it down on your pan. And once it's on the pan, I kind of like to make it look better. Okay, then you're gonna do the same thing for this one. It's not very proportional. And you kind of want to try. So I'm restarting. I'm like. Okay. This is kind of a workout for my shoulders. I can feel it. Okay. Da -da 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 -da. One loaf might be bigger than the other, and that's okay. And they will also spread out. But you put them both on the same pan, just right next to each other. I'll show you what I mean. This is probably the most ugliest batch I've ever made. But don't judge a book by its cover, because it's delicious, man. It's so good. And I would not suggest trying to bake it all in one. Definitely split it in half like I showed you because you want it to bake all the way through. Oh, it's so yummy. Whew. Ain't no rest for the wicked. Okay at this point after you formed your dough or your bread into loaves it should look something like this. You can make it look prettier. Sometimes they're longer it's not, it doesn't look very nice, but it's okay. It'll bake better and more beautiful than this, what you see in the pan. Um, and at this point, again, <laughs> um, we're going to set our oven to 400 whoops, degrees. So we're going to preheat that, and you're going to cover this with like a clean towel so that it can rise for 10 minutes. So again, set a timer for 10 minutes and by then you should be able to pop it in the oven. So after you've preheated your oven, cover your loaves with a clean towel. That's just a stain, don't worry about it. Um, and we're gonna let that rise for 10 minutes. Now we are going to pop it in the oven for 15 to 20 minutes. I'm gonna set mine for 17. Okay, our bread should be done. You can check it if you want, make sure it's not so doughy. But it should look light, has some golden brown spots. Yum! I'm gonna show you a better way to enjoy your bread other than using just butter and jam, because that's boring stuff. So, I just, I should probably show you. I have a small plate, not very big at all, you take olive oil, not vegetable oil, olive oil. You just pour some in, not too much. And then balsamic vinegar, if you have some. This one has a tough time coming out right now because we use it a lot. But you put this right over your olive oil. You don't want to put too much in though. Just some spots and dots. Okay, and then sometimes too, I ground some pepper in there. And then you dip your bread in this and it's amazing. Your piece of bread and you dip it in this. And then you eat it. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. If anyone wants to come to my house later today after Young Women's um, to try a piece of my bread, you are more than welcome to. You can try it with the olive oil or with our homemade jam um, just to see what it tastes like.
You can also eat one loaf if you want, and then the other one you can turn into the most amazing croutons. So let me know if you want that recipe and I can show you how to make those. Thanks for tuning in!